Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Ramon Mejia. I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course author interviews. Uh, this week is week five of the quarantine mustache experiment, uh, but going quite well. Um, also, uh, because of uh, shortages in tasty supplies from a local grocery store, I've also learned how to make homemade fresh pasta and salsa this week. So uh, please feel free to share your uh, quarantine skill experiments or the things that you've learned in the show notes or the, the comment sections of the show. We can all you know, communally uh, share our experiences uh, during this um, interesting time in which we live. Uh, for the podcast, though, this week, I have five new reviews for you folks at home. Um, three for me, three from our correspondent, Ian Mitchell, who has returned to the show. He's uh, been having a little bit of a rough go, but he was happy. He happily had some new reviews for us, so we're throwing them on the show. Uh, for me, it's going to be uh, Awakened Book of the Quintessence Crucible, uh, also Resistance Discardia Book Number Four, uh, and Watcher's Test, a Liberty Saga Life in Exile Book Number One. From Ian, we're just going to do two of his the reviews he sent us this week, and it's going to be Rogue Evolution, which is the fourth book in the Rogue Dungeon series, and Awaken Online Flame uh, Territ Book Number Two in that series. So, five new reviews for your folks at home. Before we get into any of that, we're of course going to give you some lit RPG news. And in Lit RPG news, we're going to begin with a daily deal from Audible in the U.S., unfortunately. Um, if you are listening to this podcast or watching it on the day that it comes out, which is May the 1st, um, 2020, um, then today's U.S. daily Audible deal is a send online, an excellent literary story written by an equally excellent author, Luke Chimalenko. So definitely go check that out if you haven't had a chance to. It is uh, definitely one of my favorite series, and I've always enjoyed it. Um, it's been a little bit while since the last book came out, but... You know, that's he's he's doing other things too, and and I, he, yeah, other things. What to say that? Uh, in other little bitty news, we have uh, little bitty author Robert Bevan and the Authors in Dragons podcast have put up a new funny and curse word filled uh, video called Story Time with Robert Bevan Hamlet. It is a very interesting interpretation of the work, and I could not stop laughing. Just to be super clear here, FYI, this is super not safe for work. Lots of cursing, lots of, if you've ever read Critical Failures, which is what the, the series over Bevan writes, um, it's it's very similar <laughs> language and humor. Um, plus, it's, there's, a, there's a weird animated video <laughs> that goes along with it, and the voices uh, should sound familiar if you listen to the audiobooks of them, too. Uh, but of course, you should also check out their super funny podcast, Authors and Dragons, one of my favorite weekly uh, listens, uh, where a bunch of authors play d d uh, some of the authors on the podcast are going to be Drew Hayes, Robert Bevan, Joseph Brassi, Rick Altieri, uh, John Hartness, and Steve Weatherall. So all very good, fun, fun very funny authors. Um, in other little bit of news, we have uh, just a quick reminder that the Mechanical Crafter book number one is on pre-sale. It is up for pre-order. That is such a pretty cover written by our Amy here, this guy also right here. Uh, so if you want to go check it out. I think the sample should be showing, but if it's not, it's it's uh, it's it's there. And if you were looking for, I don't know, an arc uh, to to get you through until then, and you're happy to leave a review, um, you know, shoot me an email. How about I send you one? Um, but the description is essentially it's a it's a star is a mechanical man, um, lots of crafting, dungeon diving, world building, sent a world where magic and turn of the century technology meet, join your parent on his adventures in this magic industrial world. And again, it's available on May the eighth. Links in the show notes. Um, things, stories that are out now I haven't had a chance to read, but they are available for you to enjoy, including Cryo Knight, a fantasy lit RPG, uh, Player Reach the Top, book number three, uh, Ruthless, the Completionist Chronicles, book number five, is out today. It is already in the top 100 on all of Amazon. Um, so, yeah, for congratulations to Dakota Kraut. He does write amazingly funny and interesting and entertaining books. Uh, also out this week is Dungeon Core Academy, book number four. Also, Another Life, I'm oh, sorry, Another Online, All Hell the Queen, which is a shorter story. Um, also, A Broken, A Bond Broken, The Infinite World, book number two um, by TJ Wright. You, uh, I forget the name of the first series. Um, the first book in the series is super popular, so if you've enjoyed it uh, by TJ Wright before, just letting you know, book two's out. Also out, uh, this one's a little more, I guess, family-oriented. Um, I think in, the, in some of the comments and for reviews for for the for, for the Amazon book is uh, one of the only intentionally books that are written for a family or for kids. So there you go. 
um, Koala Online Kindle Edition. Uh, and also out now is Ultra Realms Ascension Book Number One. So all kinds of stuff for you guys to enjoy. In new audiobooks in Little RPG, we have Winter Dungeon Land, Free Haven Land Book Number Three. We also have The Destroying Plague Discardium Book Number Three. Uh, also out is Rebel Star System Apocalypse Book Number Eight. And How to Defeat a Demon King in Ten Easy Steps sounds a little weird, and that I haven't been able to find a uh, um, an ebook associated with this particular title. Uh, I've searched by both the author's name, Andrew Rowe, and also just by like the title and the thing shows up. Um, so this may just be an audiobook exclusive uh, kind of story. So um, could be the case. Or it could just be some weird not connecting thing on Amazon. That could also be the case. Uh, also, uh, no, though, as an audiobook is Vinker the Dragon. Um, I believe uh, Ian Mitchell um, reviewed this one. He enjoyed it. So here's the audiobook version of that for you. And Max of the Rebellion, last time loop book number one, is out as an audible as well. So that's all out for you to enjoy right now. Uh, in upcoming Little BD, this is just stuff I've, note, I've seen the pre-orders for, stuff that authors have told me about, a list of things that are coming in the near future. And here we go. Um, a Baron Quest, the Bell Crown, Blood Crown book number two, out on May the 5th, 2020. War Singer, a Libby Dragon Rider Adventure of the Arkemi Online Chronicles book number four, out on May the 8th. Also out on May the 8th is going to be the Mechanical Crafter uh, book number one. On May 12th is going to be the ebook version of Shattered Swords. On May 17th, Gluminous Plus Four. May 17th as well is going to be Biomedical Self-Engineering book number one. May 20th is going to be Challenger's Call book number five. May the 20th, a new series, or kind of a continuation series, um, called Alchemist, The Alchemist, book number one, City of the Dead by Vasily Mihenko. On May 22nd, it'll be the second book in the Space Seasons series. On May 28th, it'll be Legendary Dungeon Seed. May 31st, the fourth book in the Glory Reformation Emperor series. June the 4th, it'll be The Good Guys, book number nine. June the 9th, it'll be the sixth book in the Reality Bender series. July 1st, the ninth book in the System Apocalypse series. July the 8th, it'll be Project Stellar book number two. July 14th, the second book in the Watchers uh, Life of Exile series called Watchers Question. Remember, we're reviewing the first book in the series on the podcast today. Uh, and July 31st, it'll be book one, Vindication 2.0. Um, August the 8th, it'll be the fourth book in the Bad Guy series. Uh, August the 11th, the second book in the Eternal Online series called The Ruined Temple. Uh, August the 18th, it'll be Intellectium, book number one. And there we go. That's all the stuff I know that's coming out in the near future for you to plan your reading schedule to on to new releases and reviews. Hey, and first up this week is going to be Awakened, book number one of the Quintessence Crucible, an epic cultivation lit urban saga written by C.M. Carney. Um, it is 402 pages. It is $2.99. It, on, it is available on Kindle Unlimited. And here's the author's description. Cultivation, progression, ascension. On the world of Crucible, where humanity's spiritual artists trained to fight in a war of universal proportions, arc... Uh, Ark Talven has the potential to be one of the gods, but when he accidentally unleashes heretical powers doing his challenge, he is forced to flee his home or face the wrath of the Inquisition. With his sister by his side, Ark begins a quest to uncover the truth about his own existence, only to discover a terrible secret, a secret that, with the power to destroy humanity. Will Ark master his unnatural powers in time to save the people of Crucible, or will he be the harbinger of humanity's destruction? There we go. Um, full disclosure, I received a advanced copy for review. I purchased a copy when it became available. Uh, this is a coming of age RPG cultivation story. Um, it's more of a fantasy, uh, cultivation story up until about the 30% mark in the story where the main character awakens his aspect, which is kind of this, um, AI companion kind of thing. Um, and he gets to see UI and he gets to see a, a RPG like cultivation system, um, his core tree. So, um, that's, I'm, I'm only mentioning this up front because for the first 30% of this no novel, I was like, I was like, is this a lit RPG? I'm, I'm not really sure. There's a lot of cultivation here, a lot of fantasy stuff, a lot of good world being good storytelling. Um, but up until that 30% mark, there's really not a lot of like RPG mechanic progression. And that mostly because, um, for that first 30%, 
the story focuses on other things. It focuses on world building, setting up the good and evil sides of the story, uh, the m- main character's um, personality, his antagonist, his character flaws, all that stuff. Um, there are some mention of like cores and ranks and such, but it's not really defined as a clear system until after that 30% mark. And I'm not going to say why, but it that's when it happens. And he gets access to this new information, his core tree. You actually get to see notifications. Uh, you get to see um, like an expect like system where he looks at other characters and he sees their their kind of key level and, and, and such. Um, but even in that case, um, for most of the story, it's kind of a lighter system. Um, and that may be potential, but it, it does exist. And for me, that's enough to make it a little RPG because there is a clear um, and, and again, quantifiable quantified um, progression system. So, and that's all it kind of takes for me. Uh, and it is part of the, an integral part of the story. Um, but again, there are, it's a, on the latter side of things. Um, the cultivation side of things is definitely a more heavy influence in the story. Um, there is key, which is in this particular instance, almost um, a substitution for experience points um, or like life essence uh, in that it can be absorbed from the surrounding um environment around you it can be dropped as like a beast cores which can be absorbed into or and this is unclear like infused into spirit stones and other resources where you there you know but there's set amounts of this key in these particular sources um so it's not an infinite thing um and as far as other mechanics in the story um main character can use this these key points to to enhance his particular like spell like abilities or like transformations and, and body enhancements um and so there are definitely getting quantifiable bits of of, of of cost for these things as well so that's kind of the game mechanic stuff um but again the main character um is is the focus and and, and on the story side of things is it is definitely like this coming of age chosen one kind of storyline uh, and that the main character has to overcome his bullies, his own insecurities to realize his true potential and use the one thing he thought was wrong with himself to become powerful enough to oppose the great evil in the world, the phage, or as the story goes on, other uh, twists, which I won't spoil for anybody. Um, there's also a lot of fighting and cultivation. Well, not really a lot of fighting, but there's more than that. There's less than a thousand can be in this particular novel. Um, but there is some cultivation, RPG progression. Um, but the core of the story is definitely that chosen one kind of bit in the story. On the plus side, of course, there's a world that is well fleshed out with complex characters and well thought out world building, which is kind of a a, <laughs> a reliable trait for Sam Carney. He does a lot of good like backstory, <laughs> world building, and um, character development and social like conflicts sometimes. Um, and there are problems in the storyline set up. But you can see like, oh, this is going to fuel like a whole series worth of, of, of good, interesting novels. Uh, so for me, I really enjoyed the story. I enjoyed it a lot more when th- the RP, you know, the progression system showed up. Even if it is kind of light in the story, I was happy to see that there are like things that, that are that are, that are quantifiable. Um, before that, it wasn't mad. It was just felt like more of a fantasy cultivation, which is not really my kind of story. I, I'm definitely super into Little Bridgie. And the game mechanics there, straight fantasy cultivation where there is no defined system, isn't really my thing. Um, and it's not bad storytelling. There's lots of good action in these stories. It's just not as interesting to me as personally um, as Lord of Pity. Um, and so if that's not an issue for you. Can you probably really enjoy the entire story from beginning to end if you appreciate cultivation stories more. Uh, for me, it gets a score of 7.5 out of 10. That's Awakened, book one of the Quintessence Crucible, um, an epic cultivation liberty saga with a score of 7.5 out of 10. And next up, we have Reese Distance, Discardian book number four, written by Dan Sergalanoff. It is 511 pages. It is $6.99. It is not available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. The armies of the Commonwealth, the Empire, and the neutral factions, all the leading players and clans of the Preventers, have been summoned under the banners of Nurgle the Radiant to the sands of the deadly Lacrian Desert to wage war against a most terrible enemy of all life itself, Scythe. His supporters include not only mindless wild races, but also nightmarish monsters, the zombie guitarist Infect, the death mage Crawler, and one undead warrior by the name of Bomber. So there you go. That actually doesn't tell you a lot about the series, but it is a pretty decent description of this story arc uh, in the novel. Um, full disclosure, I received a copy for you. I purchased a copy when it became available. Um, in this newest edition of the series, the scope of the story kind of expands a little bit more as major clans and factions fight to be the ones who are going to defeat the main character um, and his faction. Um, there are fewer epic battles than I thought there were going to be 
when I started the story because it starts off with like this big, huge fight. Um, and I thought that was going to be the entire story as it was set up in previous novels. Uh, but in this particular case, um, in the back matter of the story, the author kind of explains why he's he's essentially had a huge storyline with like epic fights, clan stuff. Um, but as he was writing, apparently it became too big. And so he had to kind of split it in two. And so this story has a little bit of that huge clan fighting, but also has a lot of setup and preparation for like when uh, the majority of it happens. Like there's a deadline when like all the clans are going to be allowed into the zone where the main character and his family's you know, monster faction has essentially tried to destroy them. Um, and so a lot of the stories, the main character preparing for those fights, trying to get every advantage possible and exploiting his uh, kind of OP threat abilities, using crafting, his clan building it, and even the environment to his advantage to kind of set up his his his, his forces because he has a small set of forces. He's essentially one person with a couple of people around him and a small faction of like fighters versus the entire world <laughs> to some degree. Um, and so... While there are some larger scale fights here, there are going to be even more in the next book. And so this is kind of a setup for a lot of those huge, super big clan battles. There is still some really good, interesting stuff here, um, including um, factional plots and again, some large scale battles. Um, and I think you'll still enjoy it. Um, I did get a score of 7.6 out of 10 for me. That's Resistance, Discarding Book Number Four, with the score of 7.6 out of 10. And next up we have. Watcher's Test, A Liberty Song of Life in Exile, book number one, written by Sean Oswalt. It is 654 pages, $2.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. This isn't a game. This is his new life. Dave has been wandering through life for a long time. His day job bores him, and he never seems to be able to meet his family's expectations. The only escape he's ever had is his love of MMORPGs. But when he becomes the subject of a test without even knowing it, he's portaled into a game world called Loria with no way out. It's a frequent daydream of his. However, in none of his dreams did his wife and daughter, and two other kids, I should say, um, ever accompany him. Now Dave wants balance protecting his family with exploring his dream, oh, and trying to stay alive. Monstrous beasts roam Loria, worst of all, an undead army led by the vile Death Knight. He'll have to adapt fast and learn to cooperate if he hopes to make it a new home for his family. And just maybe along the way, he'll find out why they're living a life in exile. So there we go. Um, this is a multi-narrative story with a primary focus on a family that is transported to an RPG world. Um, the beginning of this novel is probably the hardest, at least for me, to get through. Um, and, and it's mostly because of the family dynamics. The family dynamics in the story... Um, are a little bit broken and there's a ton of penny arguing between these different characters. Um, and I found it frankly annoying and I almost put it on the book. Um, and I'm not the only one who kind of felt this way. If you read some of the other Amazon reviews for the story, well, the majority of them are like really super positive. You could tell that there's a certain uh, percentage of readers who were like, who couldn't get past this section of the novel because they have found this family set up a little bit um, annoying. Um, and I absolutely understand that, uh, but I'm, I'm someone who kind of pushes through things to see if it gets better, and it does, it really does. Um, there are also multiple narratives in the story um, that don't really connect and, uh, and tie up until like the very end of the story, like the last 10, 15% of the novel. Um, and when they do connect finally, it's really good. But up until then, they kind of just feel like they exist as backstories or as, uh, as, as storylines that may or may not eat eventually like be fulfilled in the point. Um, but they, they do tie in. So just if they're not super interested immediately, it, it, that's pretty fine. Um, the main storyline is sort of a, kind of a messy RPG Swiss family Robinson kind of storyline, at least up until like 50% in end of the story um, with the family of five being sent to an RPG world where they have to fight monsters and survive long enough to figure out the rules. There again are some annoying family dynamics and petty arguments amongst the five. Uh, but by the middle of the story, those were pretty well phased out as the family adjusts and, and kind of have to depend on each other more serve for survival. Um, though only three of the family members, the husband, the wife, and the teen daughter are really focused on in this particular story. Um, and, and the only ones who really do any fighting or leveling. The other two members of, of, of the family are, um, preteen, um, one pretty young, and they kind of feel like they exist just, uh, to be put in danger, to be saved. Excuse me. Um, but like I said, that, that's kind of the storyline. Um, it's a... It's really, for the most part, it's kind of slice of life for that main storyline. But again, there are these um, 
secondary narrative chapters uh, that kind of give you a look into the world building the story, um, other factions in the world, other like uh, villain perspectives that I thought were interesting. But again, they weren't as interesting in the main focus. Um, so there you go. Like on the game mechanic side of things, um, most of the game mechanics come through really well. Um, there's a really good balance between RPG notifications and stuff um, and realism to combat. There are definitely some a few one whipping moments in the story, but include like um, the healer mom gaining several, seven levels um, from choosing a class. Um, and there are, obvious, there, there are some very obvious uh, power leveling in some of the fights and some miraculous saves but if outside of those few places the game mechanics are followed fairly faithfully and with levels meaning something so like for the most part if the family is out leveled by a monster they run away um or like somebody severely hurt um and, and they still can't can't win um if they're numbered to like huge degree maybe people with the same level they, they also don't win so they, they kind of run away and i like that like, kind of realistic aspect of the story where um Yes, you could fight something that's more powerful than you, but you're kind of taking your life in your own hands. And if you're not prepared and, you know, you're not set um, with like a, like a super good plan or, you know, there are the weaknesses, you're going to die or you're going to like lose severely. Um, so that's also about balance with like some of the gamer stuff or like um, zone pulling was something in the story that I thought was like, oh, that's, that's kind of a neat little like twist on an old MMORPG like kind of trick. Um, the multiple perspectives on the, on the story again did a good amount of world being they showed off a very faction the kingdom in the world um, but some of the time they felt again unpurposeful I want to say or they didn't, like I said um, I didn't really care for all of them and that, that's per, per, a personal thing I also don't like the multiple perspectives in Game of Thrones um, the novels and that was really hard for me to get to that series or even through the first book but again if that's not an issue for you you're going to enjoy this a, lot, a bit more than me Um and up until like the very end of the story where all those pieces kind of, or some of those pieces kind of reconnected with the main story arc for the, for the, for the, for the family, um, they felt distant. They felt like, why are these existing here? Um, but again, the payoff at the very end of the story is, is definitely worth it. Um, definitely kicked up a notch for me. Um, overall, the story was good, especially the last 15% of the story where things again tie up together. Um, there were only a few issues that kept this being great for me, um, but it was still really, really good. Um, and it gives a score of 7.8 out of 10. That's Watcher's Test, a lit RPG saga life in exile with a nearly great review score um, with a 7.8 out of 10. So there you go. Next, we have... Ian's Picks of the Week. There we go. Um, Ian Mitch was a longtime Little British Community member who reads and reviews just as much as me. And he's nice enough to agree to join the Little British Podcast family as a new reviewer. So here we go. We have a couple of reviews from him. And that's going to include the uh, Rogue Dungeon. I'm sorry, Rogue Evolution. The fourth book in the Rogue Dungeon series written by James A. Hunter and Eden Hudson. And this is the review. He says, the story moves along. It I really love this series. Rogue Evolution wasn't as thrilling for me as the previous books. Very satisfying overall, though. The beginning drug a bit. Um, a bit more slice of life to start. Um, there were several great fights, even a real world one. Rock comes up with a few new magical gadgets. And of course, Cass has some new recipes. Great overall read. The ending felt a bit abrupt, though. Um, he gives it a score of 8.4 out of 10. So there, And just as a, quali as a kind of reference, my review scores and his are usually about... Like, if he gives it an 8.4 to 10, it's usually about a 7.4 for me. Um, so just as a, as a point of reference. The other review uh, for me in this week is, I am this week rather, is uh, Awaken Online, Flame Turret, book number two. And he says, good reading. Um, I couldn't relate to the main character as much as in other AO books. Mostly a long dungeon crawl. Um, a necessary part of the fire story, much better than many other lit RPG, reminds me a lot of Continue Online, similar story. Um, and he gives it an 8.0 out of 10. So there we go. Those are his reviews for the week. And that's uh, that's Ian's Picks of the Week. And that is it for the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for hanging out with me this week. Uh, remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, our website at literaturepodcast.com. You can also download the podcast on any of the podcasting streaming apps you like or Google Play or Apple. Um, there is a bit of a wonkiness happening with some of them, but um, Google Play and Apple are showing the latest episodes of the podcast all the way up to, to 10 now, so you definitely check that out. Um, you can also... Um, 
you know, just if you want to support the podcast, you can find all the ways to do so at literaryrpgpodcast.com slash support. Um, but again, thanks very much for hanging out with me today, ladies and gentlemen. Until we can hang out again, remember to go read some lit RPG. Goodbye, everybody.